Welcome back. Well, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo calling out members of the United Nations Security Council after they overwhelmingly rejected extending the Iran arms embargo. I regret, too, that the whole world didn't join against the world's largest state sponsor terrorists to ensure that they can't have weapon systems that present risk. The United States is determined to make sure that the Iranians and this regime, this theocratic regime, doesn't have the capacity to inflict even more harm on the world. The embargo is set to expire in October. Russia and China predictably oppose the U.S. proposal, while several of our European allies abstained from the vote. Here with her reaction is State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortegas. Morgan, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Okay, so Iran is the, is the world's uh, greatest sponsor of terrorism. We had an arms embargo. The United States says, let's renew it because it makes sense. And almost everyone is against us or abstains. Why? Yeah, there was a real lack of moral courage at the U.N. Security Council on Friday night. This is a 13-year arms embargo, uh, or, or even longer, potentially. And this has lasted through Republican and Democrat administrations. This is something uh, that the world at the U.N. Security Council has recognized is needed. And why is that, as you said in your intro? Because Iran is the leading state sponsor of terrorism. So just so your viewers know, Pete, what the, what the world, uh, which those countries represented at the Security Council, decided to do on Friday Friday night was to quietly abstain in order to allow Iran to now have the ability in October to purchase conventional weapons from China and from Russia. Now, mind you, uh, there was a lot of people who were against this, namely Israel, namely the countries in the, in the GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council. These are the countries that are directly affected by the malign behavior of Iran in the region, the countries who are susceptible to being attacked uh, with these conventional weapons because Iran is the leader state sponsor of terrorism said please don't do this but our friends in Europe uh, the United Kingdom sadly France Germany they didn't even have the courage to vote no they just abstained yeah the UN proving uh, how useless it truly is uh, and we could go on and on about the the, yeah. the UN failures but I want to move to this because it's an important development an historic peace agreement between Israel yeah. and the UAE the administration was front and center on it talk to us about what it means yeah, it, it was, it, it's beyond historic. Um, in 25 years, in 25 years, we have not seen this type of uh, success, this type of agreement between Israel and an and Arab state. I got to tell you, Pete, you know, a lot of your viewers used to know me in a prior job at Fox, and I spent a lot of time in Saudi Arabia, lived in the Middle East. Um, and, and it was really such a, a personal moment for all of us this week who have been involved in working on Middle East issues for years. It's the type of agreement that I never thought I would see having lived uh, mm -hmm. in the Gulf. And what it took was an administration, it took a president, it took Jared Kushner, Avi Berkowitz, it took a group of people who said, we're not going to go with 25 years of conventional thinking. Instead, we're going to put forward a, a historic peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and we're going to work with the, with our, the Arab region, uh, neighbors in the region in order, in order, again, not to accept the conventional wisdom. I can't tell you how important that is. Mm -hmm. You know, the world said that when we moved our embassy to Jerusalem, when we recognized the Golan Heights, when we took the number of steps that we took in Israel, uh, that there would be chaos in the Middle East. Instead, what do you see yeah. under President Trump's leadership? You see peace between a Gulf state and probably more to come and with Israel. Truly Would a special. Have ever thought that would happen five years truly ago. Truly a special moment. It, it can't be uh, yeah. understated. Real quick, exit question. Yeah. Uh, some people sure. are saying this takes annexation of Judea and Samaria, so-called West Bank, off the table. Are, does Israel still have the option to do that? Well, Israel has a right to act within their best sovereign interests. It, it certainly is something that uh, is going to be delayed for several years now. Uh, Jared Kushner has uh, talked about this openly. But, uh, you know, we will see what happens. We're looking forward to hopefully other Arab countries in the region also following the leadership of UAE. Hopefully it does uh, begin an avalanche that would be very important considering those countries have wanted to wipe Israel off the map just decades ago. It's true. Morgan Ortegas, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you.